learning to be tool safe. Watch this video to find out the safety guidelines for this procedure. Let's look at safety in the kitchen around hot saute pan use, working with hot oils, and how we handle grease fire suppression. Cooking with oils is a common practice. We have hot oil in pans for sauteing, use oils and sauces as an edible ingredient, and of course, everyone's favorite, deep frying. It also ensures easy release from pans for banquet style foods. Organizing your workspace and practicing safe habits will help your food preparation with oil be less hazardous and help keep yourself and others safe. For example, watch the areas around your storage of oil supplies. They should be kept in a cool, dark storage and never above a stove. This can add to a smoky situation, but also can turn the oil rancid before it's time. There are usually spills and drips that can cause a fall with heavy items. There's personal protective equipment or PPE to consider when working with hot oils equipment in the kitchen. Thick double-breasted chef's jackets protect against splatters, oil, and dry heat. Aprons are another layer to protect yourself against hot liquids, but you must remember to tuck in all loose clothing, including apron strings, and remove any jewelry that could catch on hot pots and pans. Clothes shoes with rubber soles will protect you against hot liquids and help stop slipping hazards. When transporting oils, be aware of your colleagues and any slipping hazards. A layer of grease can make usually stable things slip in your hand. Before working with hot oils, review your plans for safety in your preparation plan. Be aware of your colleagues and how they are moving. Ensure that others know what you are doing. Don't be afraid to speak loudly to warn others about hot oil being used or moved. Do not overfill equipment with hot oil, liquids, or foods. With cooking oils, you need to be aware of the other cross-contamination risks and follow the guidelines for allergy sensitivity, temperature maintenance, and cultural food preparation needs. You have to understand the smoke point of different oils and fats. That's when they are just passing, shimmering, and ready to catch fire and can ruin the taste of the food. They can even become toxic. In general, a good rule of thumb for cooking with hot oil is using only oils with smoke points over 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Most oils will start smoking at 450 degrees. You only have a short time to get that heat off. Some different cooking oils and natural greases have been treated and refined to have higher smoke points. You have to become aware of whether oils and greases are neutral or not. Unrefined oils are filled with minerals, enzymes, and other flavors, and more used in dressings and sauces, and are not meant to be heated and cooked with. You should review a chart of different oils in your kitchen and consider the best options for when you are searing, sauteing, deep frying, or stir frying. Many kitchens use thermometers to get and ensure safe frying temperatures in deep fryers and pots. Ask your teacher if you are unsure what kind of thermometer to use or about target temperatures. When using any pan, ensure that handles do not sit over hot flames and are turned in from the aisle to help stop potential tipping hazards. Be especially careful when working with gas to avoid spills and control your heat carefully. When you're ready to cook, make a good plan by collecting all your ingredients at once so you don't need to step away from the cooking area and workspace. Determine your safe workflow. Pay attention to recommended cooking times, color, and smell, and adjust your heat accordingly. Have proper drainage space set for your cooked food and ready to transfer it to plating. Do not plan to cook fatty foods on shallow sheet pans in ovens. Broilers can easily cause a grease fire and scorch food. You want to lay food into a hot pan on a stove top with oil away from yourself to prevent splatters. There is a whole school of theory on safe deep frying procedures. Many accidents happen when foods that have not been dried or coated the right way cause undue splatter reactions in high temperature pools. Basically, water and oil don't ever mix. With deep fryers, you want a gradual heating and test the temperature prior to cooking with samples. Always assume that it's hot if there is not a clear temperature gauge. Change deep fryers only when fat is cold and use proper containers and procedures for disposal. The hood over ovens and stoves is often equipped with a special grease filter that has to be maintained. Ventilation in any kitchen is very important, especially with grease and oil cooking. It needs to be inspected regularly. For safety, you need to be aware of the steps of grease fire suppression. Ideally, prevention is best, but just in case, review these steps. First, let everyone know it is happening so that they can clear out or assist depending on the size of the fire. Do not put yourself at risk. 
assess the severity, and determine if you need to call for emergency services. Turn off the heat. Have a heavy lid nearby that fits your pan. Do not use a glass lid as it can shatter from heat. In a pinch, a metal sheet pan will do. For small fires, have a large container of baking soda nearby. Do not throw sugar or flour or other supplies into the fire. They will just add fuel to the fire. Protect yourself with oven mitts as you cover it with the lid to prevent from spatter hitting your skin. Ensure hair and loose items are secure before approaching. Be careful to not put yourself where you directly inhale fumes and smoke. Never throw water on a grease or oil fire. It will cause more issues as it spreads the fire and causes a dangerous hot reaction as it overfills the container. Ensure that you wait for the pot to cool before touching and starting cleanup. No one your fire should be treated with a chemical fire extinguisher instead. While it can contaminate a kitchen, it may be the best option if things get out of control. You need to document any safety incidents with your instructor and debrief to ensure they don't occur again. You also need to be aware of first aid procedures if you have been burned with oil. Oil saturates and sticks to clothing and can cause extreme serious burns. A burn should be put immediately under cold water and held there for several minutes. Call your chef or teacher for immediate attention. Emergency procedures for your kitchen should be clear. In the case of a severe burn, protect yourself and ensure an incident report is completed at any workplace or school. When it's time to clean up, use proper oil and grease materials garbage and procedures as described by your instructor. Discard grease by pouring in a container, chilling it, then scooping into a specific garbage. Don't put it down a sink. A grease trap is a receptacle that kitchen wastewater flows through before entering the sanitary sewer line. But you don't want it filling too fast and require frequent cleaning. Also, when ready to wash, never put hot oil pans directly in a wash sink where they can spatter out or anywhere that they can become hidden and a hazard to others. Organizing a safe and efficient workspace is the first step to practice working with hot oil cooking tools. Developing hot oil cooking skills takes time and practice. Let's do our tool safe review. Be aware of smoke points of different oils and greases for cooking. Always wear protective clothes, double-breasted chef's jacket, apron, long sleeves, rubber sole shoes, dry oven gloves. Hold trays, pots and pans with both hands. Judge the right containers and safe filling levels. Prevent cross-contamination. Plan your moves and communicate well with your peers for hot oil work. Know the steps for suppressing a grease fire. If you get a burn, place it under cold water and call for help immediately. Follow any incident procedures for your kitchen. Store oils and greases properly. Plan routine cleanup of grease and oil areas. And if you're not sure about anything for safety, ask your teacher for more direction. And don't forget to be tool safe.